record, sorry. Okay, so we have colours in our lives in many different ways. We're surrounded, we drive through nature and you know, we say very often, the green hills were very relaxing to me to look at. I looked at the grass and I felt calmer. Green is a calming colour, okay? But how does it, What do, when we do graphics and when we do our design in our homes, how do we reflect that so that it still looks attractive? And um, when I do my work, when I do healing with crystals, what does that mean? What do the colors do for us? So we're gonna cover all of those things. And tonight we have something very special. Not only do we have, Simon has a special offers for you and Khani has a special offer for you and I have a special offer for you. In addition, we have a very special gift from one of our, one of the participants, um, Ronit Barzell, who is actually at a sale, but hopefully she'll join us later. Um, and she is giving us a beautiful um, wood block, which is very colorful and has a very lovely pasuk on it. So that's something very special that um, is going to be raffled at the end tonight. So I'd like to now call on Khani to share with us some tips and information about color. Take it away. Hi, everybody. So nice to meet everybody. Um, uh, Gila, um, do you need to share me? Do you need to send me the share? Yeah, you're a co-host. Okay. I love so it. I would like to start with how the world was created. The world was created not black, not white, not gray. The world was created with color. Look around you. We, now we're in the spring. That's the perfect spring and summer. That's the perfect uh, example of what, how the world was created. God made us with colors. Everyone looks different. Everyone speaks differently. We are a colorful, colorful world. So why don't we use it at our home and our spaces and our clothing and ourselves? Now, everyone is different and color means different to everyone. Um, I'm going to show my first, uh, one of the large kitchens I've done here in Toronto where my customer emphasized that they love the idea of color. Um, they had a pure white kitchen for almost 40 years, 36 years to be exact, the husband told me. And I looked around the house and I saw that they had a very interesting light fixture right at the entrance. So I thought about it and I did my research and I came across with a color that's called periwinkle, which is like a light blue with a purple tint on it. And with the light gray, because light gray is quite popular, sometimes it could look white, sometimes not, but it's pristine, it's nice, it's classic. And I came with the color concept before I even designed the kitchen. And I said, this is what I think you should work. I looked around your house, I looked at you. I only met you for 15 minutes, but I think this should go. Right away, they fell in love and the husband told me, why do I need another white kitchen? I had that for 36 years. I'm not gonna change my whole kitchen if I wanna just have a white kitchen. So we started with this lovely color, periwinkle and light gray. And to finish the kitchen and to make it as most attractive, I went and I fought, found the main uh, colors, uh, the main of the colors, which I know Ron uh, is gonna speak about. And I did um, just light fixtures. The kitchen is a beautiful kitchen. It's not a cutting edge kitchen. It's not a, it's not a very, very, colorful kitchen it just has a tone and that tone sends the beauty and the calmness and the love to stay in the kitchen I mean every time I visit her I actually see they're always gathered in the kitchen she has a beautiful living and dining room space beautiful and when she has a lot of people obviously all there but they're always congregating in the kitchen always so just as uh, one example this is the kitchen. I, I'm actually, my specialty is to do kitchens, but um, I took it to the next level and I decided that I'm going to uh, specialize in doing kitchens with a, a, a touch of color, a tone or whatever it is. Um, the next thing is, I'm just gonna show it. This is a playroom that I did. All I did is I took boxes in different shapes, you know, rectangulars that could fit books and could fit 
thing. And I just put the colors together and made a whole beautiful wall just with a touch of colors. You know, kids love color, they gravitate to color and it attracts them. And you know, we all like colors, but for kids especially, you wanna start them with colors. So I did that for a color. Um, and this is actually a project that I did in Harnoff uh, for a customer of mine. I did the parents' house first and then the, the son bought um, a condo and a project in Harnoff. And uh, he asked me to do that for him. So all I did is the kitchen is pretty standard. It's a, it's a dark gray with white, but I added honey, just a honey. foam color. Honey, do you want to share, yes. show with us the playroom? We're uh, can you the kitchen. We're still looking at the kitchen. Yeah, so I'm just showing that there's a shelf here with a yellow tone. We can't see it. All we see is the kitchen. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. No problem. I love in that kitchen, I love that picture in the background. It adds so much. Thank you. Um, something with the, I'll, I'll, I'll reshare. Sorry, I don't know what no happened. Problem. Can you see? We can see a kitchen being designed in the midst. Okay, all right. Can you see this? What's this? We cannot see your playroom. Can you see the next image that I'm showing? No, we just see, we all we see is the kitchen, the one kitchen that's in the, in the midst of being um, can, um, built. If I can say something when using these kind of uh, slides of pictures, it requires to get out, choose the picture and then reshare your screen, unfortunately, with okay. Zoom. Okay, I will, I'll stop and I'll reshare, okay. Can you see this? We can see the beautiful vases. Okay. Well, there's two images that I put together. Mm. And the, the first one is just a kitchen, but we added the accessories to make, to pop. And the second one, uh, my customer wanted something interesting in her oh. staircase. Yeah. And I bought pex plexiglass with um, silk in there. So this is a plexiglass staircase, I mean, plexiglass on the staircase with some touch of color. Um, I'll stop here, Gila, and I'll give it over back to you. I'll One second, show us, can you show us your playroom and we don't see the other picture? Scroll down so we uh, maybe we'll be able to see the other picture of the kitchen. That's it, we didn't see any. Ah, can you see this? Yeah, now we can see your playroom. It's so colorful, it's lovely. It's lovely, but it's basic. There is light gray, there's blue, and there's red. That's it. It's all made from boxes. I had a, uh, a carpenter. I showed the carpenter how I want to build it. I gave him a plan. But all it is, it's boxes, one after another, to make this wall playroom for the kids. That's, that's what it is. Amazing. It's wonderful. And honey, when you do when you do kitchens or when you do design places, um, are there certain do people say that they want to reflect a mood in their kitchen? Is there like a hungry color? Like I, I think I've heard of red being a hungry color, um, so they use it in restaurants maybe. Yes. Okay. So the hungry color is always red, but not everybody can understand red or wants to live with a whole of yeah. with a big of red. Um, so what I is, is I, when I interview the people, I look at their lifestyle also, it does, even if it's virtually because of the year of COVID, it doesn't matter. You get, um, idea when people show you their home, you, you speak to them for about an hour, you listen to their lifestyle. And when I listen, I don't wait for them to tell me, I take time and I think about it. I do a little research about what they want and I offer them at least to start with a two-tone, which means it can be any neutral tone plus another tone. So it, even if it's a white, which people like pristine, they like classic, they want white, but then I'll show them a wood tone. And nobody says no to a wood, even if they don't want the whole kitchen to be wood, but they do like the find of a nature. White is, you know, it's very, it's lab, it's very pristine, you know. Unfortunately, all the hospitals used to be white, not today anymore. Today they actually changed it. But 
white, it's a lot, you know, you think about white, you always think about cleanliness, you think you want it to be pristine, um, but when you add a tone, any other tone, a no, usually you would love to bring a two-tone, like a neutral tone, anything that reflects nature, that reflects, and nobody would say no to that. They may not what the whole thing want, they may want it to be exactly half and hand, but they would always, always be happy for another accent. Mm -hmm. Terrific. So also, you know, wood, we say that wood is a warm color. White is cold and clinical more, and the wood warms it up. So it gives a warmth to the, um, to the environment, yeah. you know, yeah. lovely, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Okay. We need you to um, finish the screen share to close the screen share. Terrific. Thank you. That was like amazing. That was very interesting, enlightening, and um, really great to know what you could do with spaces and color. Are there some colors that make places look larger, make places look smaller? You know, sometimes we have, particularly I think in Israel, very often we have smaller spaces, but we want them to look bigger. We want people, you know, to feel that they're in a, a larger space. So is there a way of doing that with color? Yes, absolutely. So a bright color would always make the space look uh, brighter and open. And, you know, they used to do uh, back in the 70s and in the 80s, they used to call Hollywood mirrors. They used to do a big wall of mirrors and they dropped it. But now they're bringing it back in like a full wall of a big mirror in a living space, in a dining space. They're adding and then what they're doing is they're not mounting it necessarily on the wall. They're framing it and leaning it against the wall like a huge art piece. Right. But still bringing it back, uh, although they, they dropped it for about 30 years, now it's another trend and frame it. Make the mirror look like an art piece, frame it with something unique, something special, something that reflects a little color and, uh, and bring it back to give the space a little bit more whiteness or if you need a little you know make it look a little larger but always remember that there's a bright color however um black kitchen and black walls are very very strong there's a company from uh, sweden that is called uh the sweet from copenhagen which is actually nowhere um they're called vip they came out with the concept of black kitchens which means their cabinets will always be black but their motto is your kitchen can be any color and your den can be any color that you want, but the cabinets, their cabinets will always be black. And some of the manufacturers follow them. They do that, but it's not a, it's not a hundred percent black. Black, when they do black is because black adds depth. And some people like the depth where they can think more. It's not for everyone, but some people do like the black feel of depth of, uh, you know, some kind of, some people say it's a little mysticism. I don't know if I, you know what, exactly, but there is something strong about just black. And uh, what they say is use the black cabinets and then do everything around there in any color you want. So that's their, uh, that's their, and the many manufacturers from Europe actually follow them, but introducing a charcoal or a black cabinet and even the manufacturers of appliances added that as a panel, they added the facade panels in those colors. I'm talking about ovens, refrigerators, and dishwashers, and, and those and, and, and colors, but black was one of them, which I was actually surprised because why would you want a black? But uh, there's something about black that people gravitate to, or, and you know, and it's this is what they like. So black and white give you depth and they give you the it's not for everyone but the, it, it does work it does work terrific thank you thank you so much honey okay and now simon who actually comes originally from switzerland is with us here i think it's fascinating. i think it's just so interesting we've got you know, uh, all over the world here, apart from on the Zoom, also us, I come originally from Australia, living in Israel and whatever it is, it's just um, so exciting. Kibbutz Galiot, um, in Gathering of the Exiles, we're starting on the Zoom, please God, it should be in Israel in our homeland soon. Okay, with that intro, Simon, our graphic artist, who's also a Judaic artist, she 
she draws. I've sat in many meetings with Simone and she is an artist from the Nishama, from a de very deep place. And she's always drawing and coming out with these beautiful, just gorgeous pictures, right? My sukkah is actually decorated with Simone's artwork. <laughs> Colourful, because I love colour as well. Um, Colourful and attractive, Simone. Um, hello, everyone. Good evening. So I really have to apologize. English is my third language. So uh, bear with me. And I'm going to talk to you about color and in design and the use of it. And hopefully I'm going to be able to share my other screen, my, my um, um, PC screen. See if I can do that. Can you, can you, uh, how you say that, um, ah. make me a host on the- Yes, yes, on the, yes on of the course I can, sorry. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> okay. So, no, nope, still not. I'll try, see if I can do it like this. Okay. Always those little technical technical elements. That, yes. <laughs> that will challenge us, you know? The more fantastic. We're getting it. Oh. Here, here we go. So let's start with the basic colors. The color wheel, we start. First of all, I, I, I'm going to take you back to kindergarten. Primary colors are, are there are three primary colors red, and blue, and, and yellow. Basically, they can't be mixed. They are, uh, that's why they call it the primary. And with them, we, if you remember when you were smaller and you tried to mix um, yellow and red and you, uh, you got orange. And if you uh, mixed um, red and blue, you got purple. And if you mixed blue and yellow, you got green. This, this, those are called the secondary color. And then on the color wheel, you have the colors in between. They're called ter tertiary. I hope I say it right. Tertiary colors. What? Tertiary. Are the colors. Tertiary. Thank you. Right. <laughs> tertiary colors. Those are the colors in between. So um, let's see if I can. Sorry, now I got lost. Sorry. They're fab. I love the tertiary ones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, how do you you stop the screen share yeah. if you want? Yes, it's here. Stop screen share. Yes, yeah, sorry. And I'm gonna share another picture. Um here. Here we go. So uh, when we talk about design or thinking about uh, what colors are um, go which colors. I would like to quote uh, Mark Chagall who says, all colors are friends of the neighbors and lovers of the opposite, which means um, if you can see uh, on the complement, com oh, sorry, complementary. Complementary color wheel. Compl yep, sorry, <laughs> complementary oh, colors. We have red, there are the colors who are opposite on the color wheel, like orange and green and uh, yellow and purple and blue, sorry, blue and, and orange and red and green and orange and yellow and purple. And then you have the analogous colors who are the colors who are neighbors who go together well. And the third one is triadic, which are the colors who are like a triang uh, triangle on the, on the color wheel. And the third one is monochromatic, which is the same color, but either in a lighter or in a darker hue. Cool. Um, so Simone, basically, if we keep, if we stick to those rules, we can work out what colors match and go together. Exactly, exactly. Good. I'm gonna show you some of my, uh, of my work here. On the left, on the right side, I used a monochromatic, uh, uh, I say that, um, yeah. um, uh, complementary uh, colors on the same color from orange to red. 
uh, from yellow to or uh, to red to orange. And also on the on the uh, other side, I used uh, blue and 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 purple and um, teal as a combination. Gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you if you want, if you have time, I am um, sorry. Um, gonna ask you what do, does, uh, what does color say? Sorry about the typo. What does it say to you? Each color uh, evokes a uh, kind of uh, emotion or it says something about it. Different color, uh, different cultures have different uh, um, traditions about color. As in uh, China, white is considered a, a color of mourning and in Judaism, of course, white is a color of, uh, of purity. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, right. if you would have a little bit more time, I would ask you what each color would say to you like what is say what does purple say to you or or blue but since we are a little bit uh, limited on time i just want to um show you the a little bit of a chart here we go like red says excitement and passion and danger blue says trust, reliability, and coolness. Yellow is warm and cheer and happiness. Oranges are playful and warm and vibrant. Green are nature, freshness, and growth. Purple, the color we, the three of us love, and not only us, is royalty, spirituality, and dignity. Pastel and pink is uh, is softness, nurture, security, love also. White, as we say, is uh, pureness, clean, youthful. Black cons is considered uh, so 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 sorry, sophisticated, <laughs> elegant and mystery. Gold is prestige, expensive and elegant. Silver is also prestige, uh, prestige, cold and scientific. Uh, scientific. Scientific. That's amazing, Simon. So when we're doing graphics, um, if we want to say, okay, what sort of atmosphere do I want to give? I want people to know that they can trust me, so I'd work in the blues, right? Exactly. Fantastic. That's a great. Well, if you want to have that, you... that page. <laughs> Come again. I said I took a photo of that page because I think it's great information. <laughs> okay. So where? I want to talk to you about where do you get your inspiration from? Where I do I like, get my inspiration from? I mean, there are a lot of colors. How do you choose not only uh, what it says to you, what, what, what color, what mood do you want to say, uh, what color you, and mood you want to uh, show and, and evoke, but how, how do you find your inspiration? So I find my inspiration either on Pinterest it's, if you know uh, the site, uh, if you don't know the site, I really strongly uh, suggest you go there. But keep in mind, it's a real uh, time. Uh, um, I, yeah, I always say, if I go into Pinterest, please call me another two hours and see if I'm still there because I'm going to get lost. Right. There's so many interesting things. And you, I start looking for a color combo and then I look for uh, all kinds of different things. And, and I get up and look and get into looking in, onto pictures I really don't know a need, but they're so nice and so interesting. Wow. And there also is a, a, a site called Color Seeds, which has color combinations of all kinds, uh, taken, uh, taken, in, taken by pictures and if I'm looking for some fresh uh, idea, I usually go there and try to figure, find an inspiration. But also, my, my family already knows, I walk around uh, with my cell phone and it's very hard to take a walk with me, especially not on Shabbat or Chagim because I stop every so uh, minute and take pictures. And they know it's like, 
it's a stop and go um, walk with me. And they're very, thank God they're very patient. And I drew my, I drew my um, uh, inspiration also from, uh, uh, sorry. We lost you, Simone. We lost your pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> Here, uh, I take my inspiration from pictures I took. Ah, for example, so on the right is a, a on the far left is a, a cactus uh, of my neighbor, and on the on the far left on the far right is a, a yarn I I knitted with, and I looked at it and I go, wow, that's such a lovely combination. I really want to do something with it. So uh, that, that's where I draw my inspiration. Amazing. And what I would like to say to you, go around, uh, go with, walk around the open eyes and you can see in the in nature or on urban, urban uh, places, uh, wonderful uh, color inspirations as well. Right. Um, okay. That's about it. <laughs> wonderful. Simone, that's great. I have to tell you, I actually do go... I was in a um, coffee shop, like a, a milk bar, a, a Macaulay type place, and I saw a packet of uh, sweets and they had a packaging that I just needed for my graphics. So I took a photo of it and I said, that's it. You know, so I think it's also, you know, if we open our eyes and we see the, you know, so many beautiful things. I mean, nature's like the number one that's going to give us, that offers us so many beautiful things, so many gorgeous colors. Um, I, I always say, Marabuma Secha Hashem, how great are the wonders of God. And I have to tell you that I personally, um, about six years ago, I was lucky enough, I traveled to Zanzibar. And when I traveled to Zanzibar, we also went, because if I go to one place, then <laughs> far away. And I figured, when am I going to be back there? So we pop, went to Kenya as well, because you could just take a flight there. And we went to a safari. And while we were on safari, we saw birds and we saw animals in such incredible colors that it was so inspiring. And it was like, nature is our inspiration. That's where it all comes from. We saw these birds in these colors, these fabulous teal colors. It, it, it's just like unbelievable how beautiful it is. And I think, and I obviously, I love the colors of nature. I love flowers and I love crystals. Okay, and I always see my pretty colored crystals here. I don't know if you can see, they keep on going into my top and I wanted them to be out with my purple earrings because I said, purple is me, <laughs> right? Um, so I wanted to say, you know, like I've always loved colors. And when I, um, when I met, when I did my kitchen in my house, I said, I want color, I love color. My old kitchen was white with green, okay? <laughs> But, you know, a turquoise green, and that came, this teal turquoise came in way after me. And even today, I said, I need color. So I've got a big purple couch in my house. And I've got, you know, all sorts of things. And very often, um, my graphics will be colorful as well, because that's just the way I like it. Anyway, but let's talk about the crystals. I, I have, first of all, what does it mean? I work on crystals. Um, they are a passion of mine, as you well know, and I work with them and I'm able to understand so many things about people through their choice of crystals. What does that mean? I have like a hundred crystals. Somebody, and one second, I have about a hundred different crystals and I invite people to choose whichever crystals they want. How are they attracted to the crystals? Yes, they're attractive because crystals have frequencies and the colors have as well. So you're choosing a color and I'm understanding what's going on. And in fact, what is it that colors a crystal? Okay, I'll just pull here. This is a green one. Okay, and when I, what is it that colors it? It's minerals. And another name for crystals is actually minerals. Okay, and they're full of them. God gave us fruit vegetables and food for vitamins and he gave us crystals for minerals okay so when people choose all of these minerals or crystals or stones or gems choose whatever name everyone is correct when people choose these i'm going to understand a lot and i'm going to arrange it actually according to colors because the colors tell me a lot 
we have what we call energy centers, seven energy centers, and each of these are represented by a different color. So for example, if I start at the lower chakras, energy centers, that's the Sanskrit name for that and it's a popular name for these energy centers, we have a root chakra. Our root is our base. What color are the roots? They're a dark color, okay? So they're always gonna be dark. Then we move up to what's called the sacral chakra or the sexual chakra. And the color there is red. And red is also like a vibrant color of life, the color of blood for all the different reasons, okay? Um, and it's, it's got a certain vibrance to it. We move further and we go to an area called our solar plexus. Our solar plexus is like above our belly button and beneath our, our chest. And that area is yellow. It's represented by yellow. And what does yellow say to you? To me, yellow is a bright, sunny color. So when our solar plexus, for example, the energy is working well in our solar plexus, our energy is going well and we're happy. We're feeling good, all right? If I move up to the heart, the heart has, is pink and green, two different colors that we work with, okay? So pink tells us one thing and green another. So for example, if I see somebody who's taken lots of stones at their heart, I'm gonna understand something about their heart. If I see someone has just taken green stones, for example, I'm gonna understand that they're a very giving person and they don't give to themselves. And just like a plant needs watering, so too does this person need some more water and they need to water themselves so they don't wilt. They need to give to themselves instead of just giving to everybody else. That's just because they chose green only that I'll understand that at the heart. If I go next, my next color will be blue. And blue is the throat, the ear, nose and throat area. This is our area of communication. So when somebody's gonna to talk to me, um, choose lots of blue stones, I'm gonna understand something about their communication. Something's going on, something's not going on. And then there are organs that are associated with it. So very often when people choose lots of blue stones, that's the area where our thyroid is. And I'm gonna understand as well that the thyroid isn't functioning as well as they would like it to, or as well as it should be, okay? So those are things that we can understand. And then of course, I have to move on to what's called the third eye, okay? This is the third eye or the third brow. And this color is purple, okay? And this area, the third eye represents spirituality. Now, if I wanna to talk to you about spirituality, I might be talking to you about going to synagogue and lots of praying or saying to heal him. But spirituality is also something else. It's our creativity. It's our writing. It's our art. Um, so many things, which is why I said, wow, I understand why honey and I and Simon love purple because we're creative people, right? We love to create and work with different things and think out of the box in a very different way. And that's the purple. That's the spirituality of a purple color, okay? And then if we move up to the crown, okay? The crown is our, is our, it's the, it's our, our mind, our brain, but it's also the area, it's another spiritual area, but in a different way that Hashem, God comes in. This is the area where God's light can shine on us. And it's also an area, obviously, where our mind is. So it's going to tell me something about somebody's mind. Maybe they want more energy there. Maybe I can understand if somebody's really bright by the stones that they've taken. All different things I can understand through the colors and also through the meaning, because each of the crystals have very different meanings. So there are so many things, but the, the crown chakra is like a holy chakra. And it sort of like fits in with what Simon says so beautifully because Simon talked about gold and white being those holy colors. And that's exactly right. Those are the holy colors. And those are the colors of the crown chakra, the crown energy center. So there's just like so much I can tell you about colors, but I wanna just show you 
I'll tell you, one of the beautiful things that I do with stones is I can take stones, I call them stones very often, crystal stones, everything works, from each of the different energy centers and lie down with them. That is so relaxing. It's on the one hand relaxing and calming, on the other hand, it energizes the, the, the different energy centers, not in a, a jolting way, and you would need to get up and run and do, it, it's a calm, but it's a calm energy. So if we put different stones, all of the different, according to the different energy centers, then it's going to do wonders for us. Um, and so one of my friends, I did sometimes when I uh, run workshops and courses and different things, I give people all the different stones from the different energy centers and they lie down with them. And one of my friends said to me, Gila, I have not slept so well in years. And it does a lot of wonderful things for us as that energy sort of penetrates for us. So that's like, I have like a women's set of stone and a men's set of stones for lying down and um, um, sort of like fixing up and helping the energy centers to function at their best. Okay, and I can see that our time is running quickly and I wanna tell you what our special offers are. So I'm gonna start with me and then um, Simone will tell you her offer and Hani will share with you her offer. So I run webinars and this is actually going to be the last one for a while because I'm moving in my webinars. I talk about the 12 of Neha Hoshim, which are all different colors. And these are the crystals that were worn on the breastplate of the high priest in his service in the Beth Amikdash. Okay. Um, white and gold. Um, to answer Samantha. Um, and I go through the stones and what they mean, all of the other Hoshim. But for, this is the last webinar that I'm going to be giving on this for a little while. I'm going to be moving into specialized topics. So if you haven't been to that webinar, I recommend you join. The cost is $12 for the 12 of 12 of Hoshim, 12 start, but those 12 stones. And it's, I'm going to give it to you for half price. This offer is valid. So it's only $6 or 20 shekel, you know, something like that. It's mamash, it, um, you know, not a lot of money, but I just, um, so that is going to take place. This webinar is on the 15th of June and you can sign up till Friday. You have that, you can sign up beyond that, but you've got that special offer till then. I also am beginning a course on five session Zoom course, all right, where, each participant receives a box with about 20 different crystals, two of each of the crystals. Each person receives this box and they get the basics of crystals. It's amazing. And normally that course is for um, 1,480 shekel. And when I do an early bird special, it's for 1,380. And tonight it's for 1,320 shekel, okay, which in dollars is about, I don't know, 465, I think I worked out. So it's a great special. So if you're interested, be in touch. The offer's available until Friday, okay? And now I'm gonna to turn to you, Simon, because you've got a great offer. And I'm gonna share with you, I'm gonna send everybody a follow-up email with a recording of the webinar, and you'll have it written all of the um, specials, and you'll have a link to how to connect to them all. Okay, Simon. So first of all, I wanna thank you for inviting me to this panel. And second of all, I was at the uh, Gilas uh, workshop on, on the Avnei Hoshen, and it was amazing. So whoever, uh, I really, really recommend to, to join her on this uh, workshop. It's, it's great. And my offer is 10% uh, um, off on all my products on my Etsy shop. And I think Gila is gonna send you the link and the link with the coupon. Uh -huh. Coupon is uh, is color twenty one, and Gila is going to send you the link for it and the link to my Etsy shop. Wonderful, thank you, Simona. Hani, and um, thank you again, Gila. And I was I personally always loved the crystals without even knowing that there is something so special about it because they're natural. So I. Thank you for inviting me to your panel as well. Uh, I would like to invite uh, everybody that participated in this and is going to get the recording is to have a virtual consult consultation with me. 
on their house and anywhere that they want to add color for about a half an hour. Uh, Gila is going to send you my website information and all you have to do is send me an email through the website and tell me that you joined this panel discussion and I will do that. Just we'll book an appointment for you. Wonderful. That's great. Great office here, ladies. And now we have Rodney Barzell. Rodney, do you want, are you able to turn on your camera and your mic? Because Rodney has given us a beautiful gift that somebody's going to receive. And I want Rodney to do the raffle. I have everybody here who's participated, has come, has got a number. Okay. And Rodney, could you please? I've lost you. I can't see you, Rodney. Are you here? Ah, here you are. Hey, Rodney. Great. Okay, choose a number, please, between one and twenty-eight. Me? Yeah. Um, eighteen. Number eighteen is Deborah's phone. You have to tell me who you are, Deborah's phone, because I won't be able to send it to you. <laughs> Yo. Are you here? You can send me a message as well. Someone's come up as Devorah's phone. If we don't like... show them what they've what they've won. First of all, show it to us. We'd love to see it. Okay. Have a look at this colorful, right? Ronit shows us. And as you know, I've done a simcha panel. I believe in simcha. So it's like mitzvah gdola liot basimcha. It's a big mitzvah to be happy. So that's her beautiful. Ronnie does fabulous work with lots of colors and art. And she's just um, one of our ladies. So I'm going to have to choose somebody else unless I hear from Devorah. If you send me a message so I can work it out. Um, okay. Choose another number, please. Ronit. Um I will choose 10. Number 10, Miriam Ehrman. Okay, Miriam. Miriam Ehrman. Okay, I have your details. So I can. Uh, Miriam Ehrman is my sister. She okay. was on the panel. Okay, she came. She was here. And I will get the details. And that's wonderful. And I will send out as well Ronit's details. Okay, in the follow up email. So if anybody would like to order from Ronit, she's got a fabulous range of stuff. Gorgeous, classy, colorful, broad range. Love it. Okay, so thank you everybody for being with us. Thank you, honey. Thank you, Simon. And thank you everybody for participating. And it's been really wonderful. Okay, have a great evening, a great day, depending where you are. Lihitra on everybody. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Gila. What was the color, the last color that you mentioned with the um, the chakra? I talked about the crown chakra. Okay. Yeah. What was that? What was that color? Gold and white colors. Gold and white. Gold. The color gold and white cream. Okay. Those type of colors. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Pleasure. It was great. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.